Hello friends, this video on how do organisms reproduce part 25 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us look at some of the questions to see that how much you understood the lesson. Asexual reproduction takes place through budding in amoeba, yeast, plasmodium or leishmania. Budding. What was budding? Let us have a quick review. Budding was nothing but a small outgrowth appears and that outgrowth then grows. When it becomes matured, it detaches itself from the parent body. So it happens in yeast. What happens in amoeba? Amoeba undergoes binary fission. What happens in plasmodium? In plasmodium, it undergoes multiple fission. In Leishmania also, they have binary fission. Right? So all of them undergo fission. Let us look at the next one. Which of the following is not a part of the female reproductive system in humans? Ovary, uterus, vast difference, fallopian tube. So if you look at the human female reproductive system as well as male reproductive system, you see ovary, uterus, fallopian tube. They are all part of the female reproductive system. But vast difference is the tube which carry the sperms in the male reproductive system. So the correct answer would be vast difference. Let's have a look at this one. The anther contains sepals, ovules, carpel, pollen grains. So what is anther? So if you look at the structure of the flower, this is the anther, this yellow colored structure. So this is a part of the male reproductive organ that is anther is a part of the stamen right so the anther contains the male sex cells in a flower which are the male sex cells they are the pollen grains so the anther contains the pollen grains what are sepals these are the sepals these green colored structure which ensures protection what is ovule this small structure inside the ovary what is carpel this entire female reproductive part of the flower is carpel Now let us give a thought to some of the questions here. What are the advantages of sexual reproduction over asexual reproduction? I think I have discussed this quite a number of times while going through the lesson. One important thing is sexual in sexual reproduction is variation and variation plays a very significant role in the long run and it is a, one of the most important advantage of sexual reproduction over asexual reproduction. So some of the advantages, a new organism is produced combining characters of both parents. In case of asexual reproduction, the organism, the new organism which is produced is exactly identical to the parent. But in sexual reproduction, the new organism will have traits of both the parents. So it will be a combination of both the parents plus it will have some new characters. That is variations are introduced which in turn ensures survival of a species. I am sure now you understand this statement. What does it mean? Accumulated variations over a period of time gives rise to evolution. As I said before also, that small, small variations when taken together over a long period of time, it gives rise to some new organisms. So it gives rise to evolution. So these are some of the advantages of sexual reproduction over asexual. Two parents can take care of the organism. Now, in asexual reproduction, there is just one parent to take care of the organism. But here, two parents can together take care of the new organism. What are the functions performed by the testis in human beings? So, testis are the most important or most significant organ of the human reproductive system. So, they produce sperms. And what are sperms? Sperms are the male sex cells. Without them, reproduction will not happen. They also produce the male hormone testosterone. Testosterone is the one which is responsible for the development of secondary sexual characters in males like the development of uh, pubic hair or the development of beard, moustache and things like that. Why does menstruation occur? Now, just now I explained some time back what, why menstruation happens. Because an egg is released from either of the ovaries every 28 days in a female. Now as soon as, what is this known as? This release of the egg is called as 
ovulation. Now, as soon as ovulation takes place, the uterus prepares itself to receive the fetus. So, how does the uterus prepares itself? It thickens its wall. That is, the inner wall of the uterus, which is known as endometrium, it thickens. That is, it gets richly supplied with blood to nourish the embryo. Because if the embryo comes in, it will need a lot of nourishment. So, for that, its wall gets thickened. Now, it waits for around 14 days. When no fertilization occurs, there is no zygote formed, so the zygote doesn't come to the uterus. So now this thickened endometrium becomes a waste. So this thickened endometrium breaks, and as a result of this breaking, this blood which was got which got collected there, it will come out through the vagina in the form of bleeding. And this bleeding through the vagina is known as menstruation. So this is the reason behind menstruation taking place in every female every 28 days. What are the different methods of contraception? What is contraception? It means avoiding pregnancy is known as contraception. So some of the methods of contraception are condoms, oral contraceptive pills and surgical methods. So with condoms since it covers the sperm so the sperm which are it, it covers the penis so the sperms which are ejaculated by the penis it gets connected by the condom so they are not able to reach the female body so that's how pregnancy is avoided similarly with oral contraceptive pills it stops ovulation so ov it does not allow ov for as long as you take these pills ovulation will not occur after you stop taking the pills ovulation will occur since ovulation doesn't occur there is no egg so even if the sperm enters the female body, there is no egg to fuse. So there will be no fertilization. So there will be no pregnancy. There are some surgical methods as well, where in males, the vas difference is removed. I mean, a small portion of the vas difference is removed so that the path of the vas difference is blocked. Similarly, there is a surgical method in females where a small portion of the fallopian tube is removed so that the sperm cannot go and meet the uh, egg so that the egg and the sperm can never meet there will be no fertilization there will be no pregnancy so these are some of the methods of contraception how are the modes of reproduction different in unicellular and multicellular organisms well when i talk about unicellular organisms they are made up of just one cell so that one cell performs all the different life processes so there are no specialized tissues, there are no specialized organs. So no sexual reproduction is possible in unicellular animals because for sexual reproduction, we need a male, some specialized cells which have capability to reproduce. So there in unicellular, there is just one cell. So that one cell can either act as a male sex cell or it can act as a female sex cell. So one cell cannot do anything, right? So there is no scope of sexual reproduction in unicellular organisms. So unicellular organisms, single cell, that is why they have asexual mode of reproduction like fission and budding. Whereas in multicellular organisms, they are made up of many cells and those cells are grouped together and to perform some specialized functions. So they can undergo both asexual as well as sexual mode of reproduction. Mostly the advanced multicellular organisms like human beings uh, go for sexual mode. Whereas there are some simple plants as well as simple multicellular organisms which undergo asexual mode of reproduction as well. For example, hydra, planaria, tapeworms, they all undergo sexual mode of reproduction as well. Right? So how does reproduction help in providing stability to population of species? So we say that reproduction is something which is very very necessary to maintain the stability in the population. Why? That's because if there is no reproduction, what will happen? In a population, there will be no new organism which will be formed. So the old organisms which are existing in that population, they will gradually start aging up and they will suffer from some diseases or due to some or other reason they will start dying. So now since there are no new organisms which are being formed, so the population will gradually start decreasing. Right? And gradually a time will come when that species will become extinct. 
so basically reproduction actually compensates for the old organisms which are actually dying up so we can say that had there been no reproduction of a species the species would have disappeared with time as the organisms would age and die with time so it is actually the new so on one hand the old organisms are dying while on the other hand reproduction is giving rise to new organisms so that ways it is maintaining a stability to the population of species right let us look at the next one what could be the reasons for adopting contraceptive methods so what are what is contraceptive method that means the methods which are adopted to avoid pregnancy so why do you think that people want to avoid pregnancy what are the reasons for avoiding pregnancy so i mean what are the reasons why they go for the contraceptive methods because the contraceptive methods will not allow them to pregnant so to avoid unwanted pregnancy to maintain proper gap between children like as i said it is always good to have good age gap between two children so that the parents can take care of each child well right so now if you want to maintain gap between two children that means in between that time when you do not want a child you will have to go for that contraceptive method so that you do not get pregnant to restrict the total number of children like if somebody already got two kids and he doesn't want any more kids and in fact it is good not to have more than that so for that also he will have to go for contraceptive methods so that the female doesn't get pregnant so these are some of the reasons because of which uh, people should go for contraceptive methods so now with this i have reached the end of the lesson so this was all about the process of reproduction i hope this video helped you so see you all in the next lesson thank you please visit www.examfeo.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again